What's up guys, it's Brad from Let Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be showing you the scene and compositing breakdown of the second new shot in our City Builder 3D asset-based add-on trailer with our new Soviet assets. Like the last video, breaking down the first new shot in our trailer, this is not really a tutorial, but a scene and compositing breakdown so that you can hopefully get some workflow ideas for your own projects inside of Blender. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our scene setup here. It's pretty similar to the last scene setup video that we created, but we did use some new concepts as well as you can see here on the right side we have our camera view again we've used the cable cam cinematic movement rig to uh, animate our camera moving around the center building here this is actually probably one of my favorite shots that we created for the trailer just because of the way the camera moves around the main building here as you can see here we have our cable cam pan and tilt control directed sort of at this building in the center of our scene here and then our cable cam cinematic movement rig kind of uh, tracks from behind this building here in the foreground and then moves its way around the uh, uh, main building in the center of the cityscape shot. So one of my favorite animations, as you can see, we're also animating the pan and tilt control to tilt up as the camera moves around the building to kind of create a more dynamic shot. We've also actually, for the camera move, if we select the camera here and go to the camera tab, you can see that we've also animated the focal length to change to uh, zoom in over the course of the shot as well. So as you can see here, as we move through the timeline, the camera is zooming in from 35 millimeters all the way up to 50 and then eventually to uh, 65 millimeters at the end of our shot. So one of the cool ways you can create some more dynamic shots without the audience actually noticing the zoom as much is by actually tracking the camera sideways as the zoom is occurring. So as you can see here, when we go through the timeline, you don't actually notice the zoom that much just because the camera is moving as well. So that was the camera move for the scene to create our environment. Of course, we have our main building in the center here. Again, we're using our new Soviet assets. In the main part of our scene here, we used Soviet large Two, Soviet Large 1, Soviet Large 3, and Soviet Large 4. And then we've duplicated Soviet Large 2 a few times by using Option D in order to keep the same attributes as the previous version of the building so that the uh, file doesn't get as big. And we've duplicated the uh, second of our Soviet Large assets as well just to kind of uh, put in different areas of our shot. So the first thing that I do when I'm creating any of these city shots is I try to strategically place very specific buildings before I create a particle system and just spread a whole bunch of little buildings along a plane here, which you'll see in a second. So all of these buildings in the scene, I've just very specifically placed them to kind of create the uh, background of our main shot. And then as you can see here, when we select this ground plane here and go to the particle tab here, you can see that we've actually added a particle system to it. And if we go ahead and enable the view option on the particle system, you can see that in addition to our specifically placed larger assets in our scene here, we've also just to fill in the background and to fill in the spaces below the buildings, we've distributed a whole bunch of these smaller Soviet assets across the particle system on the ground plane to our scene. And that's just to kind of fill in the spaces along the ground to create a little bit more realistic environment lighting wise in addition to fill in the background by the uh, sky plane that we've added here as well. So that's what we've done here for the ground plane. We've just created a basic particle system. I have a tutorial on creating a particle system like this on our channel as well. So if you don't know how to do this specific look, I'll go ahead and put that tutorial in the description below as well. But that's pretty much the process I go through when I'm creating a lot of these shots is I place these specific buildings that I want in my shot first that are generally those bigger assets closer to the camera and then I start filling in the space in the background or by the ground with a particle system that's distributing a collection of the smaller assets along the ground and the background of the scene. So that's what we've done here. I'll go ahead and disable the particle view setting here really quick because that can as you can see here slow down the uh, viewing of the scene here. As you can see we distributed 3,000 different different uh, assets across the ground plane here. So it can take a toll on your computer depending on what you're working with. And my computer isn't particularly fast. So, but anyways, that's essentially what we did for the buildings in our scene here. We've also, for the ground plane, we've created a material like we did in the last scene setup that is just a uh, darker material so that the environment would be a little bit more realistic to a real city. As you can see here, we've actually used a texture for this specific example. We've used a damaged asphalt texture that we just kind of projected onto the plane here to make 
make sure that light doesn't reflect too much from below the city once the sun and the sky kind of hits it and bounces around in the scene to create an environment more similar to what you would see in an actual city. So uh, just a little trick there, like in the last video, we're just making the ground a uh, darker material so that the light doesn't bounce around quite as much. As far as the rest of the scene setups here in the background, we have a few plates of Seoul, South Korea here, as you can see here in our preview panel. It's just an image of the skyline in that city. And again, I've just used the images as planes import option here to import that image to our scene. And then I've turned the material into an emission material so that it's just a background image emitting the light of that picture. And because our camera is rotating around the scene a lot more, I've just duplicated that same background and just put it over here as well. And if we go through and pan through the scene here, you can see where the seam actually ends up. And I just tried to stitch that together as best I could so that the background was fairly seamless. Um, but that's essentially what we did for the background. We tried to use the part of that projection that was more sky and less city because of the perspective of the shot. And for the rest of the lighting scene setup, we've added a sun to side light the environment. We've warmed it up a little bit here in the lighting tab and increased the strength to 2.1 to kind of match the background plate of the photograph of Seoul. And uh, then on the side here to create some ambient reflections, we've actually duplicated that background city photo one more time to kind of emit light from the camera to create some more realistic reflections on the city itself. You could also use an HDRI of the city to be even more realistic, but sometimes in my experience, it's nice to specifically place lighting planes to kind of create some interesting looking specular reflections on your scene. So that's all this foreground plane is. It's just essentially that background plane that we've used to create some lighting reflections on the rest of the city when we render it. Other than that, we've also for our world panel here, just created a basic sky, played around with the turbidity settings a bit and left the strength at one to create that ambient lighting. And again, for our composite, we've chosen to export a mist pass as well as ambient occlusion and our combined beauty pass. And again, like I showed in the last video to export those, you would just go to the compositing tab. Once you have them selected in the layer properties panel, you would just choose to export your image to the composite and then your ambient occlusion to one file output of your choice and then your mist pass to another file output of your choice. And then you can seamlessly composite all of those different files together in whatever compositor you choose. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Inside of Blender, we exported the animation in an OpenEXR file format at 1080p resolutions with around 40 samples. And then we moved to compositing our elements together. All right, guys, here we are inside of After Effects where we did our compositing. Again, we have a super simple compositing process here, but I'll go ahead and play through the final composite before we go through it layer by layer here. All right, so pretty cinematic shot here and super simple setup here, guys. Now let's go ahead and go through the process here. So the first layer of our composite here is just our basic beauty pass of the scene here. Nothing too complicated, just the straight export from Blender with color and lighting applied to it. The next layer that we added after that was of course our mist pass. And as you can see here, when we add it, it's adding that mist in a very procedural way once again, creating more thick of a mist in the background here in comparison to the foreground. And as you can see, when we enable it by itself, you can see that it's more misty in the background and almost no mist in the foreground here by our building right next to the camera. And again, that's going to add that procedural mist that just adds a lot of depth to your shot. And once again, I just used the opacity settings of this mist pass layer to kind of control the amount of mist that we add to our scene. It's just a matter of taste of how much mist you want added. It's also important to think about how much mist would be in your environment given the background and the lighting that you choose for it. So for example, if your environment is super sunny and it's a bright sunny day, you're probably not going to have as much mist. So it might look a little bit uncanny to add a lot of mist to your scene. But if it's a cloudy day, maybe it's a cloudy morning where the sun hasn't come up yet and that's the environment you're going for and you haven't added those sun rays hitting everything, you can uh, dial up the mist quite a bit more and still get a pretty realistic result. But again, one of my favorite passes to play around with to create some depth, I just left the opacity of this one, I think at 
16% and as you can see it's just adding a little bit of depth to the scene fairly well. I've also added a levels color correction effect to the mist pass in order to isolate some of the layers a little bit more. As you can see here if we isolate it and uh, turn on and off the levels I've just kind of played with the data within the mist pass layer to get a little bit less of a variation between the foreground and the background here. It's a pretty subtle difference but just keep in mind that all these different passes that you're using are just image data that you can use to play around with in your final composite so feel free to play around with that data in order to get different results. All right, so the next three layers that we added are just some basic live action atmosphere elements. All I've done here, as you can see, if we just turn them on, all I've done here, as you can see, is I've just masked out some of the atmospheres and just animated them going from right to left, going by the camera to create a greater sense of movement from left to right. And in my opinion, adding some live action elements like this is what really brings your shots together. So that's what we did here. And uh, I've just duplicated the same atmosphere pass three times. And uh, I added a little bit of blur to each one just because because the resolution of these elements wasn't that good and since they're gonna be so close to the camera if we blur them a little bit and our focus point is by the building here in the center of our scene it's not gonna be really noticeable and in my opinion it ended up looking pretty good so I decided to go for it anyways the final two layers in our after effects composite was of course our adjustment layer with our color correction and a basic letterbox to uh, get that widescreen look as you can see here under the creative tab under Lumetri color it's just a Fujifilm look 250d by Adobe which kind of boosts the contrast adds a little bit of blue and green to the shadows and creates a pretty cinematic look in my opinion and I've also just played around with the curve settings as well just to highlight different portions of the image anyways guys that's it for this scene and compositing breakdown I hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below I'll be releasing the next four scene and compositing breakdowns of the new shots in our city builder 3d asset based add-on trailer very soon so stay tuned for those all of these shots in the trailer are super similar conceptually so keep that in mind but we will be releasing more of them in the future if you're interested so stay tuned and i'll see you guys next time